Hi, and welcome to Five Points Blue. I'm Kelly Finglass, and this is Christy Scales, and we're going to give it a run and answer questions that women want to know. That's right. Everything you wanted to know about football but were afraid to ask. I'm the Cowboys sideline reporter. Kelly, of course, is the director of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders for how many years now? Uh, 23. 23, 23 years. years. Okay, that was the first question. That was easy. No. <laughs> no, okay. I'm going to, if you will allow me, I'm going to play stupid. This is football for dummies for okay. me. I've been around the Cowboys in the NFL for years, but I, I'm my specialty is the sizzle and the show, and your specialty is the, the football. So um, let me just think of some of the little questions that I have. Um, number one, when we see Tony Romo and he's on the field and he's got bulk in his back, what is going on underneath his jersey? Well, he has some additional padding down there because he's had injuries to his ribs before, and so uh, it's not that unusual of a, a thing. I can remember players back in the late, quarterbacks back in the late 70s or early 80s who'd taken like direct hits, uh, and so they would add some extra padding. In fact, um, Dan Pastorini back in the 70s mm -hmm. with uh, the Houston Oilers, I'm going way back. I remember, uh, he's the first one I remember to have kind of a protective flap jacket down there. Do you think Tony Romo is nervous or tender at all since his recent surgeries. Do you think that before every time he gets powed, he's he kind of tenses or I think that you, that you can't play like that. You have to be fearless out there. And yeah, some sometimes the you'll see the the quarterbacks where they can see it coming and they can maybe do a little bit to protect themselves, but at the same time they'll all tell you that hey you just got to turn it loose and make the play and suffer the consequences later. Yeah. Well, that's what this is for to kind of That's right. Uh, do personality. Um, okay, question back on, now this is Kelly's Football for Dummies. When we are talking about touchdowns like Dez, when, it, when he's reaching and he's a half a yard away, what part of his body has to be in the plane to make a touchdown? Is it feet, shoulders, hand, ball? What part has to be there? actually not any part of his body it just has to be the football so all you have to do is literally get the ball across the plane so Kelly if you'll hold your hand up here and let's hold it like that and let's say that this is the goal line and let's okay. say that I'm Des Bryant or any other player with the ball all I have to do is reach the tip of the ball to that goal line okay. no part of my body has to has to hit the goal line in fact on DeMarco Murray's touchdown run not any part of his body got into the goal line. It goes got across. into the end zone. All it once, I see the once, get once pushed back. Once they it, go over and then they get pushed all the way back. Does it count? That's called the plane of the goal line, right? This imaginary line. And as soon as the tip of the ball crosses that plane, touchdown. As long as my body is in bounds, as long as I have not stepped out of bounds, as long as I touch the ball over that goal line, that imaginary plane, it's a touchdown. Okay. Now, a catch we saw the week before, I think it was Williams. Terrence Williams. Where his feet, for a dancer, he was like in a forced arch. He, his feet were barely inside, but it was feet that had to stay inside. That's different. That's right. What part of that body has to make a complete pass? Well, a receiver has to have two feet in bounds, or Both in Terrence's feet. case, toes, the tippy tips of your toes, or one knee or your hip. There's an old saying, and John Madden used to say it all the time on Fox, one knee, in fact, I believe the name, the name of his book on football was one knee equals two feet. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it really was. Okay. So, yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. But anyway, uh, two, two toes or feet. And inside the, feet, the line. Yes, uh huh. Inside the line, or a knee, or your hip, or backside. One if you hip, follow one your knee, backside. or two toes. That's different from college because in college you need just one. I look at the stadium from a totally different perspective. That's right. We're looking that's for right. kick lines and yard lines and visual effects. And that's that's why the cheerleaders rehearse mm -hmm. before a home game at the stadium because the rest of the time they're here at the dance studio at Valley Ranch at the Cowboys practice facility, but you guys go out to the stadium because on game, you know, you're on the field and so yeah. you're having to use the yard, the you hash marks. The yard lines there. Um, <clears throat> on a stage you have spikes or you have tape, electrical tape giving you lines. Um, on the football field we use the yard lines. More than the yard lines we use the hash marks. And the hash marks change from college football to pro football and uh, that can be a little unsettling when we practice, when we have a college game like the A&M game the night before the Cowboy game 
and we're practicing on college marks and the next day it's different. It actually, um, spatial precision is very important to the cheerleader's performance. Yeah, that's one, uh, I know we only have time for one last thing here, so I'll, I'll make it very quickly, but when you talk about the hash marks, that's those train track lines, right, that go down the middle of the field. And Kelly's right, they're, um, they're more narrow in the pros for the NFL than they are for college. For uh, the pros, they, the, they are the exact width of the uprights right. of the goalpost. They're wider for college, so sometimes you may be watching a game and you're because I I see double train tracks down. You ever seen that where you got the, the two sets of hash marks down the field? Why do they have double train tracks on that field? Well, it's because that's a, a, a stadium that uh, is used for both college and pros, and unlike AT&T Stadium where we change out the field, they're not able to change out the field like we do, so that's why you have double hash marks sometimes. So if you've ever uh, seen that on TV and you're thinking, why are, why are all those extra lines out there? That's the reason. Well, thank you. This has yeah, really been fun. fun. We'll I hope we get to do it again. Later this season. You bet. You bet. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us on 5PointsBlue.com.